Hi! This video will show you how to write a program to create all the sets needed to make a line in Kakuro. We will attempt to find all the combinations of n numbers adding up to a specific sum. The numbers must be in the range 1 to 9 and be unique. Since we don't have any special constraint, we will go for the quick and dirty approach. We'll try to generate all the possible sets and screen out the unwanted ones. Let's see how we can build such sets. First of all, let's have a look at catenating two vectors. If we try to use the function catenate to catenate two items, it catenates them one after the other. This is the way catenate works. What we want here is to catenate each element in our vector, like this. To catenate each element to each other, we use the operator each, but uh, we can't see very well what's going on here. So let's use bracket box to see better the output. Bracket box is a user command that has been introduced in version 14. And let's try this again. Now, that's better. So we can see here that the number one was catenated to the number one, the number two catenated to number two, and three catenated to number three. But that's not what we want, really. What we would like to do is catenate number one with all the numbers one, two, three, catenate the number two, and catenate the number three. APL allows us to do this nicely without actually looping, and this works in all the APLs that are available. Jot dot distributes the application of the function, in this case here, comma, on all the elements. This is what we want. We want all the numbers in the vector i3 to be catenated to all the numbers in itself, basically. So here we have one catenated to one, one catenated to two, one catenated to three, and so on. In Dialog APL, there's an operator that allows us to swap the arguments to a function. For example, if I do three divided by six, we get 0 0.5. But if I use commute, which is the operator to swap the arguments, it reverses the arguments, and we get 6 divided by 3. If commute is used on a monadic function, it turns the call into a dyadic function by copying the argument to the left. For example, this is the signum of 3, but this is the square of 3. It's the same as this. So the same way here, as we were using i3 jot dot comma i3, since we're using the same argument on both sides, we can use commute and we get the exact same result. Let's do it now for the numbers 1 to 9. So now we've generated all the possible pairs of numbers from 1 to 9. There are 81 of them. Let's put them all into a variable. Let's see what their sum is, and let's say we want to find all the ones that add up to 6. Now we use that 6 to compress over v, that 6 variable to compress over v, and we find out all the pairs that actually add up to the number 6. So let's create a little function here that generates all the possible pairs by using jot dot comma commute i to 9 and then sums each one of them, and then compares with the number that we want, the argument, omega, and then we use that Boolean result to extract only the ones that we want. So if we try it with pairs with six as an argument, we get the same result. Now, there's a problem with this. There's actually two problems with this. The first one is that the rule says that the digits must be unique. So right now we have a couple of uh, threes in there, so that solution is not okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the Boolean mask to say not only do we want the sum, but we also want the ones that are different. Those elements in the set is different. So for each one of the sets, we will run the function different, and if it's true, then we will keep it. So let's try the function again. There it is. The double three has been screened out. Now, there's another problem with this. It's that the pairs actually are not unique. For example, 1, 5 and 5, 1 are exactly the same set. What we should do is remove those sets. So one way to do this is to sort them out and to extract the unique ones. 
So we'll create a function sort and we will modify the pairs function to this time. Once we've extracted the ones we want, we sort each one of them and then we extract only the ones that are unique using the unique function. So let's try it with pair 6. So let's try it with pairs adding up to 9. Seems to be working. Okay, what about triples? Well, we can use the same technique where we generate all the sets consisting of three numbers. Here they are. And we generate them all and we extract only the ones that add up to the sum that we want. So let's try it with 6. These are all the sets of three numbers that add up to 6 with the numbers 1 to 9. Now, we still have the same problem here in the sense that 1, 1, 4 is invalid because it contains the number 1 twice. Also, the set 1, 3, 2 is the exact same set as 2, 1, and 3. So we need to solve those two problems. We cannot use different slash because it is meaningless on more than two numbers. Trying to do different slash 4, 1, 1 is the same as doing 4 different than one different than one. And one different than one is actually false. And what we're trying to do is compare if four is different than false, which doesn't make sense. So what we will do, we will write a function clean that will actually make sure that the numbers are unique first in each set, uh, keep the ones that are unique, and sort each one of them, and finally return the sets that once sorted are unique. So, for example, if we run the function clean on these three sets, we can see that 117 is definitely not something we want to keep because the number 1 repeats, and that the sets 2, 1, and 3 is actually the same set as 3, 2, 1. And clean will return us only a single set, which is the numbers 1, 2, and 3. So, let's modify our triples function to make use of it. So, it's the same function as we had before, but this time we clean the result. And if we try it on 6, we get only the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. How about quadruples, and more generally, n tuples? What we need to do is repeat that jud dot comma as many times as necessary. We needed to do it once for pairs, twice for triples. Now we need to do it three times for quadruples, and in general, n minus 1 times for our n element sets. So we can write a function here, a traditional APL function, to repeat jot dot comma for so many times. This function here will do it. We initially set the result to the numbers to repeat and perform the jot dot comma on line 3 as many times as needed, given on line 2. If we run it, we can see that it generates the same thing as we had previously. So, for example, 3 cat i3 is the same as running the expression i3 jot dot comma i3 jot dot comma i3. Now, let's have a look at it again. Same thing here. Now, dialog APL has a special operator not found in other languages where you can run a function on its left as many times as you want given by the operand on the right. So, if the operand says 2, you run the function on the left twice. So in this case here, we're going to be running the function jot dot comma power 2 on the argument on the left and the argument on the right, which happens to be the same thing. So if we run it, we can see that we're generating exactly the same thing. So we don't need actually the function cat that we wrote. We can use this directly. These two expressions are identical. So we can run now an n cat function that will run the jot dot comma function as many times as the left argument minus one. And it will do this on the argument as right and left argument. Now if we try to run this, we get iota three jot dot comma iota three gives us twice. And if we run it three times we get the same thing as we had before. Now is it the same thing? It is. Our looping function is exactly the same thing as the one using the power operator. With this, we can run the n-tuple function, which will make use of our n-cat function. That one will run the n-cat function as necessary to produce sets of n numbers. We will screen out the ones we don't want, so 
keeping only the ones that add up to our sum, and we'll clean it afterwards. So let's try it. Does it work with 4 and top 11? Yes, this is the only possibility. This is the only way we can add up four different single digit numbers, 1 to 9 to 11. There's only one way, and that's the way. How many are there? There's only one. Let's try the largest possible case. This is the case where we have nine numbers. They can all be only the numbers from 1 to 9. They must all be different, and they must add up to 45. This is There's only one possibility. So, oops, we're having a problem here. It looks like we ran out of space, which makes sense, because we're trying to generate nine exposant, nine sets, each one containing nine numbers. We're trying to generate more than three billion numbers here. Well, that's quite big. And I only have 64 meg in the memory, so that's why it's not working. But it, does our function work for six? Yes, it does. Does it work for seven? No, it doesn't. Okay, so there's a limit on our function here. Okay, maybe we can do something about this. We're using jot dot comma, but if we look at this carefully, we can see that this structure here, this is a three by three by three, and the numbers we're generating are actually the indices of each one of the elements there. So the top left corner is index first plane, first row, first column. The second one is first plane, first row, second column, and so on and so on. So actually, APL has a primitive to do that. So we can use IOTA333 to do the exact same thing. So maybe we can use this feature in a new tuple function. It should be slightly less space consuming because in the first case we were using so many temporary structures to build the overall result. In this case we don't need it. So it should be a little bit better. And it should be faster too. Let's try it. So let's see how, first of all, how it compares with the previous version we had. We had n tuple, and now we have n tuple b. And it is more than 40% faster. Let's see if it runs. No, it still fails. Okay, so we need to figure out another way. How about using encode for this? So these are all the pairs using encode. No, this would not work either it would require too many numbers. So this brute force method is not working very well. Maybe we can modify it. Here's pairs. We don't really need sort and unique. We can actually screen just using smaller than. If you look here, I generate all the pairs, and then I only keep the ones where the number before is smaller than the one after. And then, I use from each one of them the ones that add up to the number that we want as our argument. Let's try it with 9. See, it generates all the numbers that we want. We don't need to sort. We don't need the unique. We end up with the exact same result. So let's try a version of triples also, the same thing. We first generate all the pairs. We screen out the ones that are not smaller. Then, we generate all the triples, and we do the exact same thing. We use the first two numbers in each set, and we only keep the ones whose first element is smaller than the second element. And then we check if the sum of each one of them matches the number that we want. So let's try with 19. It seems to be working fine. Now. We don't want to create a new function for quadruples, one for quintuples, one for sextuples, and so on. What we want is a single function that will generate all tuples, given n as an argument. Pretty much like the cat or n cat function that we had before. Here is a function which, given a list of tuples, will generate new tuples with one more element. For example, it will take pairs and generate triples. If it takes triples, it will generate quadruples, all in increasing order. For example, if I want to generate all the pairs of the numbers from 1 to 9 that are in increasing order, then gen will do it properly. 
Now we're going to try it with triples, but first, triples are going to generate a lot of output. So we will use the new user command rows to cut off the extra output. Right here, what I'm saying is uh, cut at the end over there. So if I do it again, we can see that now the end is cut off. Now, if I run it twice to get the triples, I get 84 triples. And same thing for the quadruples. We have 126 of them. This one is the same as previously, using the power operator. So now if we use it into our new n-tuple function, which will use gen, and use it as many times as necessary to produce all the sets that are in increasing order, from which we extract only the ones whose sum is equal to the one we want, then we should be able to do this. And this is the ultimate test. Will it work? It does, and it's pretty fast too. Let's see how much space it is consuming. This also is a user command that is only available in v14. So this is taking only 86k compared to the other one that required billions of characters. This is a lot better. And the time it takes to repeat it is ah, 3 milliseconds. That's not bad at all. We have accomplished our mission. We found a way to do this. If we don't need to go any further, we can stop here. We have proven that this is feasible and we get the result we want. But there are cases where you may want to further study the problem. Is there a way to improve it? Can we do any better? This was the first attempt. If you want to see a different approach to this problem, have a look at the video on generating Kakuro sets in APL. There we will have a second attempt. I hope this proved interesting to you. Have fun!